Okay, we're going to return to that story then of the uh, footage which has emerged from the Ukrainian town of Bucha, where um, the videos that have been released allegedly show dead bodies of civilians lying in the streets and others piled in mass graves. Ukraine blames uh, Russia and Russia says it is a provocation by Kiev. International Affairs commentator Marco Gassis joins us on the programme for more on that. Marco, so there we have it. We've got conflicting... Uh, reports from either side saying what happened. How do you see it? Well, it's difficult for me to see anything and it's difficult for anyone else to see anything at this point. Uh, normally when we have uh, bodies appear somewhere, we have uh, inquests, we have uh, investigations, police are involved. It could take weeks for a single body here uh, with NATO involved. It's taken minutes to reach a conclusion and how surprising uh, the conclusion is to claim and blame the other side. Uh, so I have uh, very, great concerns about the way we're being pushed into a conclusion where we really don't know whoever these poor people are, how many of them there are, what they died of. We have no knowledge, and nor do the politicians who are currently trying to push us into believing uh, what they're telling us, that their enemies are worth us hating. Because, of course, if we hate their enemies, we might be more prepared to listen to what our politicians are saying we should do about them, including accept all the losses to our own freedoms and living standards uh, involved in, uh, in following our leaders' policies. Can I put this point to you as well? Russia knows it's very evident that the whole world is watching it and its actions, especially when it comes to civilians and the suffering of them. So why would Moscow, after stressing repeatedly it takes utmost precautions to not target civilians, then suddenly kill 300 of them? Well, uh, whatever the figures that are being bandied about, the fact is that uh, the Russians certainly have no, no, no good reason to be doing anything of the kind. But those who want to accuse them of, of this uh, so-called or this claimed uh, atrocity have every reason to accuse them. We have to remember that we are not only in a real war, we're also in a, an economic war, a political war, and above all, at this point in this discussion, we're in an information and media war. And what we have here are simple images, simple claims uh, designed to create simple conclusions. And we should always be wary of those. I remember in the last uh, geopolitical crisis in Europe, uh, in uh, Serbia's Kosovo province, there was a place called Rachak, where 140 bodies turned up all dressed in civilian uh, uh, uniform. Rachak was used as the reason for Rambouille, the peace conference, which was the basis for bombing Serbia uh, immediately afterwards. After all the dust had got, uh, settled, we found out that actually uh, warriors had been killed and dressed up in civilian uniforms by their fellow soldiers, the KLA uh, Albanian extremists, and they admitted it afterwards when nobody cared. So it's all about the first impression. Make the first impression hit. And that's what I think is happening here. But I cannot tell. It's too early. The investigation needs to be had. But we can't trust an investigation by the parties who are have every reason to load the dice uh, for one conclusion. Mm. Yeah, I should point out uh, a quote from the Russian Defense Ministry states, quote, not a single local resident suffered from any violent actions while this settlement was under the control of the Russian armed forces and it claims the atrocities only came to light after the troops left okay. the city and the Ukrainian army arrived. If correct, exactly. Marco, that leads to a lot of hard questions for Kiev. It certainly does. I mean, certainly uh, not least from the fact that the mayor of uh, Bucha himself said that the troops, the Russian troops had left by the 31st of March. We now have three days later, hundreds of bodies are suddenly turning up. What happened in the, in the missing three days? How come these bodies are now uh, showing no signs of having been uh, exposed for three days? They haven't got any rigor mortis in the images that we've seen. And how, how do you explain the fact that you couldn't see hundreds of bodies in the, in the street for three whole days, during which time a whole lot of people have turned up there to actually make these claims on day four? The other thing I would actually say, I have to be a little bit cynical. This use, uh, this place called Butcher, uh, if we are talking about English language information warfare, the word Butcher is an extremely potent word. I wouldn't be surprised to see it used and reused and misused uh, over the next few days. But I also wonder if this, if one is to be cynical, whether this place was, caught, was chosen for such claims because of the name it has. And the, and the unfortunate people who have died somewhere, for some reason, are simply uh, instruments after their deaths of media warfare. 
Marco, just a final thought on the reaction in the West from claims that come from Kiev. Do you think there are dissenting voices among journalists, investigative journalists, when they, when they see such claims and just print them, but they're perhaps being forced from higher up on the, uh, on the news outlet scale to say, no, we must say this? Or is there just a general blackout of, of questioning and whatever comes from Ukraine? Yeah, that's the truth. Well, I've worked with journalists in war zones. And I've worked with them on lots of issues, and they are uh, ultimately uh, the creatures of those who send them there. They know what the story is, what the stories they need to cover, and what kind of effect they need to give it. They need to play on emotions. They need to get people emotionally involved. We know which emotions they want to uh, create here, and uh, they will be creating them because nothing else will come out. There is, in the Western world, an information blackout uh, symbolized by the blackout of RT itself. Uh, so no other story is allowed in if they can stop it. They want, uh, they don't want anything to confuse the simple image they want. Unfortunately, the simple image they want is usually entirely untrue. And in Ukraine, uh, false claims are being given carte blanche uh, to appear, whereas real, real episodes, real tragedies, human tragedies, or people killed on both sides are, are simply not important unless they serve the purpose of the propagandist. Thanks for sharing your thoughts on RT. International Affairs commentator, Marco Gasich. Thank you.